welcome to my daffodil tutorial. Um, I hope you find it useful. Uh, I'm going to try and talk you through the process step by step. So I'll start by showing you the reference picture that I've used. So this is from a website called Unsplash and this picture is from Vincent Wright. I have flipped it because I prefer things facing to the left. And I think everyone has a preference on that. So if you get a picture and it's, you know, an animal or person facing the wrong way, don't forget you can flip them. So that's the picture I'm going to be using. Now you'll see under here, I've done a very, very faint sketch. But I thought I'd show you my process first of sketching out the daffodil. So I thought you might find it useful. So if we look on the reference photo, at this particular daffodil here. So I would start by just, I'll do it quite dark so that you can see it. So just doing the trumpet shape. And then you've got your bit over there that shows the depth. And then you've got, so that would be shaded there. And then just a rough idea of where the petals are going to go. But because it's a loose watercolour, you don't have to be too precious about it. So that's, that's roughly the process I follow. The ones that are more on their side, like this one here, you do the outside of the trumpet first and then that bit of the trumpet's quite important because that's where you can show the the real shape and the depth of the trumpet okay so i wouldn't have my sketch that dark as you can see here it's really faint because pencil marks show through the watercolour paper sorry pencil marks show through the watercolour paint not your paper so what colours are we going to use today mostly a bit of yellow ochre and some gold ochre so I've got two different makes here, a Daniel Smith and a Winsor & Newton. Um, this is quite nice and orangey um, and this is very kind of pale. I'm not going to do the bright yellow, yellow daffodils like in the reference picture. I'm going to just maybe make them a bit softer today, maybe a bit more orange and a bit more green. The green I'm using is a Daniel Smith's Deep Sap Green. I might mix that again to create some different tones. So I might mix it with some yellow aqua and some gold aqua. So the other things you're going to need are a larger brush uh, for doing just the background really and the, the base wash and a smaller brush for some finer work. I use a lot of kitchen roll for dabbing and drying and cleaning my brush um, and I just find it, it so much more helpful than trying to do it without and also a bit of scrap paper is always very useful for trying out the colour that you're using. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do, my water isn't particularly clean but I think really matter because it might help you see what I'm doing. So I'm going to start on this top daffodil and I'm just putting some water, laying some water down. I'm going to do the first two. So it's not puddly water. And I'm not being particularly careful about where it goes. I don't mind it going around the edge of the flower. And then I'm going to get a little bit of a bigger brush. So the 
this one's a size 8, that's about the right size. And I'm going to get some of the yellow ochre, but just quite pale and quite wet. Just going to start marking out. a bit more but not diluted of the orangey gold ochre just around the trumpet Process. And we'll just keep going then with our base. This is just the first wash. Don't want anything too. doing round the edge of the trumpet and you want your colour a bit more concentrated and that's the gold ochre rather than the yellow ochre. go wrong you can always lift off some of the colour just using a clean paintbrush going in and, and dabbing and pulling off a little bit. So I'm just gonna go back in now. Swap my brush for a smaller size four this one is. Layer. The 
say it's not really going to be anything like the reference picture but the reference picture is always really useful for giving you that basic shape that you need and I'm getting a bit of kind of a greeny colour here that's not too in your face so again it's quite soft and then but right at the back there on that bit, just make it a little bit darker to give that sense of depth and then I'm gonna go put in a bit of paint like that and then you want to push it back so you clean dry your brush and then push it back a bit so that you get the dark where you want it and this this one up here in the reference picture has got a little bit of green again so you just put it in and then lift it off a little bit and anywhere else you feel you might want some so that one looks like it could do some just across there so again put it on clean your brush and pull off again so you're beginning to get your basic shape of daffodil now. I'm just going to amp up the orange just a little bit. So this is quite dry. Possibly was a bit too dry so I'm just going in with some water here just to of the, the trumpet there so I'm pushing a bit of the paint kind of down which towards the middle of the trumpet okay so now we're going to get a bit of our yellow okra along the bottom of it. Now I am mixing. I've got several colours in my palette at the minute. Different browns and yellows. But mostly this is the yellow one. that are very very bright yellow. So I think today we'll just go for a softer daffodil. I might change your mind then and add a bit more zing to that. 
just in some parts of the leaves, petals. Done your trumpet, and you start to look at your petals. Just start adding a little bit of colour to them, but you don't need too much. You're just giving a sense. in the shape of the flower. It just needs a bit of shadow there, so I've just put a bit of big brown there, just to make that more shadowy. So let's try an error and patience really. Now, just building up where these different petals are, where the shadow is. So I think I sketched one in the back there, but I can't even see what I've done. So, so I made it so pale, so I think I'll just... some colour but not necessarily as detailed as the others so coming back to this one See how we put in a bit of colour, a bit of paint, but then you lift it off again. Door. Sorry about that. The cat's just decided to come out make its presence known. Stop meowing at me and I'll look for some food. You can tell I'm not professional, can't you? It's for all other people don't have to put up with this sort of thing, cat. Okay, so these I'm quite happy with at the minute. They're nice and soft. I'm going to go back to this one now and add in a bit more around the edge. I might actually just put a bit of green in there like that. Just very softly, gives it a bit of, a bit of depth. And Trumpet. 
on quite concentrated and then you need to reapply so you have to just keep going back and just adding and going over <laughs> and I'm sure other people don't have to put up with this cat mm -hmm. Just putting a bit of colour in there and then lifting it off again. Do you want to make that one a bit, a bit yellow and just there? So far, all I've used is the two colours and a bit of green. I'm just going to put a bit of colour coming down there. This cat, you are getting in the way. Just because I want to soften it up a bit, and it just looks nice if you just put. bit of colour. Nice and soft. So probably would leave that to dry for a little bit. So I'm going to have a, a look at the stalks now. And there aren't many that you can see the kind of neck of the stalk in these ones. If you look at the reference picture, you've got some I've got this bit on, but these three, yeah, you can't really see anything, that one you can see a little bit, so that would be these, these you could probably see a little bit, these it's just going to be coming straight down, so I'm going to start I think with this one, and I might use a little bit of, um, Burn umber. Just let's see if that neck a bit. Mix it in with the green. Softening it. So this is deep sap green. I 
I'm not going to put a lot on. do in terms of the green at the minute um, for the stalks and we might need a tea bit up here for this top. Again, with the green, I'm putting it on and pulling it off. So there's a lot of putting on and pulling off going on. And to soften it, I might kind of go around a bit of negative paint in there, just putting some pale green on that, some mixture of the deep sap green with some of the yellow left quite just to around the edge and I might do that just up there a little bit. So that is more or less all your base done. And you can now just go in and keep going over the basic details until you're happy with your daffodils. Now, the art of loose watercolours is knowing when to stop. So it's getting that softness, know when to stop. You can see their daffodils and you know, but are they bright enough? I think this one is probably just a little bit too, too pale maybe. So I just need to decide do you need any more? Useful. 